I'd like to think that I have pretty decent self-control, but I guess not when it comes to plants. I start to plan my vegetable garden probably in January. It's about then that I'm going stir crazy. I've been inside for a while. It's cold. It's gray. It's time to dream about being outside and days like this in the sunshine on the porch, enjoying the weather. I can't resist going to the nursery every spring and picking up some flowering bushes, some pansies. Check back soon on my pollinator video on why it's important to incorporate flowers into your vegetable garden. But I do start a lot of plants from seeds and these are some little peas and nasturtiums that are getting some sun today. <laughs> Remy is always down to help. He loves fresh peas. But all of this starts here in this little room. I start by first checking to see the seeds that I have on hand from the previous season and then I start my web search. I go online and I search for my growing zone which you can find by going and doing a google search for your zip code. Hi baby. Once I have it narrowed down to my growing zone I look at the varieties that are available and what I'm actually interested in eating. What do I buy a lot of at the grocery store? What's gonna save me money and be fun to grow? From there, I read reviews on the varieties that I'm interested in. And if someone, if for example, everyone's having a problem with germination or, or say not producing a lot of fruit or things like that, I'll pass on those. Then once I have the planting spacing, I get out a little diagram of my garden and I plot out exactly what I'm going to put where. Now I usually deviate from this plan, but it does help a ton. <laughs> One of the major pluses of starting seeds inside is that you can grow really cool varieties. So here are two of them that I'm really excited about this year. Bill's to Tomato and California Tulip. Let's hope that by the time we get to the tomato transplanting video, I have some of these to put out into the garden. But the point of that is, this one in particular is 10 seeds for, I want to say, around $5. Think about the cost of buying a tomato plant from the nursery. Something like this, this little baby, itself is going to cost more than $5. And I can tell you that you're probably not going to find cool varieties like that at least not at my local grower. You also get a few tries at something. So not every single variety that I'm interested in growing sprouted the first time. So I have a chance to re-sprout those. Seed packets have lots of information on them. So on this one in particular, it is the California Tulip Tomato. And at the top, you can see a little description of the plant itself. And and along the side, it has how long it's going to take to germinate, the ideal soil temperature for it, the seed depth, the planting space, if it's frost hardy, and how much sunlight it needs. In the planting instructions, it's going to tell you, for example, on this one, it says start indoors six to ten weeks before last frost. Heat mat helps to warm soil and speed germination. You can see I have that right here under these seedlings. That's really helpful with things like hot peppers that need it a little warmer to get sprouted. Now, like I said, I've been doing this for about 10 years now and there's been a lot of trial and error, so here are some of the things that I have found to be really helpful. These seed starting trays that have the little cells that can go down into a basin so that you can bottom water are really helpful in getting the roots to go down. I also have humidity domes to go with them. The humidity dome is going to help with germination rate too. Lighting is really make or break when it comes to seedlings. You're doing a substitute for the sun, so try out different brands, varieties, rigs, whatever you need to do until you find what really works for you. Some other things that I have that are optional but really nice, a humidifier. I like to take the humidity domes off of my seedlings right away so that I can get them a little bit closer to the light. And since I'm starting my seedlings inside in January, February, March, when the heat is still running inside my house, the air temperature or the air quality is a little drier. 
So having a humidifier to add humidity right in next to the seedlings really can be helpful. Another thing that can be helpful is an oscillating fan. This will simulate the wind from being outside and get your plants to be a lot stronger in their roots and in their stems and be able to withhold wind when they get out into the real world. A common problem is leggy seedlings. So when your little baby tomatoes are ready to graduate from this to this, all of those hairs have the potential to become roots. You can plant them a little deeper. The same way with peppers, you can plant them really deeply. That being said, if you have other seedlings that are leggy, like lettuces or squash or things like that, it might be worth the time to start over. Give yourself plenty of space in the growing season so that you have time to redo things if you need to. So you can see the roots on this, maybe I can zoom in a little bit, are really reaching for the bottom thanks to this two-part bottom watering pot. And they're starting to curl around and reach out, which means they are definitely outgrowing this space, so it's good timing to get them out. To get them out, I'm going to gently tip it over and then push my thumb under the bottom, squeeze, push, and tip, trying not to pull from the base of the plant as that can disturb the roots. And we're wrapped up on each other here, so I'm gonna detangle. So you can see that nice little bundle there. It's got good roots, definitely ready to be potted up. I don't know if you did this when you were a kid in school, but we did, I think it was with beans, but it may have been with peas as well where you sprout them on a damp paper towel inside of a plastic baggie. That's another thing that you can do if you don't want to start in the seed trays is to soak them on a damp paper towel and that will help them to sprout and you know that they're viable before you plant them directly into the ground. So peas are pretty versatile and you have quite a few options as to how to start them important that you take along the plant tag so that you remember what you have in which pot. For this, they're visually very different, so it's probably easy to differentiate even after the fact, but I have been guilty of thinking, oh, I'll just remember what's in there and lost track of what tomato or what pepper things were. Um, not the end of the world as long as you're harvesting everything and you don't care and it's all delicious, <laughs> but it's also nice to know what is where little tomatoes and while I normally only plant one tomato seed in you can see this it's kind of funny because it spills two but there are two that have grown in here so they must have been stuck together so I'm gonna do the same thing where I turn out the side give it a nice squeeze all around give it a little push we've got some roots that are growing out the bottom so I'm gonna be mindful of that and gently since this is a backup, I'm going to go ahead and thin one of these. So this one has a little extra set of leaves and looks like a little bit of a wider base. So I am just going to, and it hurts my soul to do this, and I'm going to just pluck this one out. And this one can get planted in really deep. Don't forget your seed marker. Now that little guy is in there nice and deep and we'll have lots of extra roots when the time comes to transplant into the garden. Be sure to check back soon for my next video in which I'll be talking about direct sowing seeds into the garden and transplanting all of these wonderful seedlings that we've started into the ground.